The other day, Apple announced its Glow Time event, and at this event, we're expected to learn all about the new iPhones, Apple Watches, and even AirPods that are coming later this year. So let's dive right into all the leaks and rumors we've heard so far. So the event's on September 9th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time or 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, at this event, we're going to learn about the iPhone 16 series. So let's start there. The iPhone 16 series is going to come in four sizes, a 16, 16 Plus, 16 Pro, and 16 Pro Max. Now, this is basically what we've seen from Apple since the iPhone 14 series, so there's not going to be really any big changes or any new form factors that we haven't seen before. But we are going to get bigger iPhones, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. So for the baseline iPhone 16, so the 16 and the 16 Plus, we are going to get the action button on both of those. So there's going to be no more mute switch on any iPhone. You're going to have the reprogrammable action button, just like the 15 Pro and Pro Max do. And as someone who has been using the 15 Pro Max with the action button, I have to say, best decision they made was changing, allowing us to change the button to what we want it to be, as my iPhone's always on silent. Now, there's also going to be a new button that's coming across the board to all the iPhones, and that's going to be the capture button. Now, this button is essentially going to be a hotkey to bring you directly to the camera, but it may be a haptic button, and as you press it, it'll open camera. If you press it harder, it'll record a video and be able to do a bunch of things like that. A softer press might focus it, but as of right now, we haven't really heard much about that, but we do know that case manufacturers are getting ready to have an, another button on our iPhones, which I think is gonna be a very interesting change to have. Now, this is also gonna feature an A18 chip, so Apple is gonna skip essentially bringing a bin down version of the A17 Pro to these cheaper iPhones and just say, here's an A18 chip, and that's gonna be for the Apple intelligence as Apple intelligence is gonna require a lot. There's also gonna be a redesigned camera layout. So similar to that of the iPhone 12 series where the cameras were stacked and the flash was outside the unit, we're now gonna have that look again, although it's almost like Apple took the iPhone 10 and 12 and kind of merged them together. But I do think this is a very interesting take on the camera design because it's something that hasn't changed in about three generations of the iPhone now. So it will be nice to see how Apple makes it look when it's finally released. Now, let's talk about the iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max. So these are going to be bigger than before. Now, one is coming. the Pro is coming in at 6.3 inches while the Pro Max is coming in at 6.7 inches. So it's gonna be close to what they were before, but bigger. Now, part of this is going to be due to the new bezels as the bezels are gonna be slimmer on the Pro models and just really make the phone go edge to edge. And it's actually gonna be such a my such a minuscule upgrade to the physical form factor of the phone, contrary to popular belief, as both phones are becoming 0.2 inches bigger as the Pro is gonna be 6.3 inches and the Pro Max is gonna be 6.9 inches, which is up from 6.1 and 6.7 respectively. So we're getting to the point where the iPhones are gonna be a little bigger, which I think once we get to that 6.9 and 6.3, that's ultimately going to be the spot where Apple's going to have to stop because they're going to get into that iPad mini territory with the Pro Max very soon. Now, these iPhones are going to also feature the capture button, as I mentioned before, a A18 Pro chip, which is going to help with the Apple intelligence side of things as well as an upgraded 48 megapixel camera. So the back camera for the ultra wide lens is gonna get a significant upgrade and this is coming to both the Pro and Pro Max. So Apple isn't making you pick which iPhone you want based off of camera specs. Allowing us to have a better ultra wide camera at 48 megapixels is gonna be a very nice change just because of the fact that we'll finally be able to take high quality ultra wide photos, which is also going to allow for better low light photos without having to rely on Apple intelligence to constantly upscale your photos. The iPhone 16 Pro is also going to get the 5X telephoto lens that came to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now that camera is going to be across the board for both of the lineups. There will be some upgrades to it as well. We just don't know exactly how much besides just the fact that the 12, the 5X zoom standard 120 millimeters is now going to be brought down to the cheaper iPhone 15 Pro. But now let's talk about the Apple Watches. The Apple Watch Series 10 is going to feature a whole new redesign as we're gonna have bigger Apple Watches. So the 41 millimeter is going away and we're only gonna have a 45 millimeter or 49 millimeter size option, which if you're keeping up, that is the size of the Apple Watch Ultra. So we may also even see a redesigned Ultra 3 just so Apple has essentially a differentiation between the lineup. Now, this redesigned Apple Watch is going to feature slimmer bezels, of course, and also be completely redesigned. So 
it's going to be thinner and also with a stacked logic board and even maybe support bigger battery, which is something that as an Apple Watch Ultra user, I have come to grow and love. But having that for everyone would just be a game changer as Apple and other app developers would optimize their apps to now use less battery because of the fact that more of the consumers are going to have these larger batteries in their Apple Watches, not just Apple Watch Ultra users. It's also rumored that in this redesign, we are going to lose the band connection mechanism that we have had for a very long time. And personally, I don't think this is the case based off of the leaked CADs we have seen earlier this year. And you can find the video in one of the corners up there where I did a full deep dive on the Series X and all the rumors we had a couple of months ago. But seeing that Apple may go and replace the band mechanism after 10 years is kind of upsetting as someone who owns way too many Apple Watch bands. But hey, if they do it, they'll most likely offer a connector or something of some sort, just like they do with the USB-C and Lightning dongle as, in the, as, they, as they've done in the past. So we'll have to see. There's also going to be new health features such as blood pressure monitoring and possibly hypertension detection, which is when the Apple Watch is going to be able to tell if someone has sleep apnea, which as someone who sleeps with his Apple Watch, this is something that I think would be very nice to know because we already get all of this other data from sleeping with our Apple Watch, like our respiratory rate, our heart rate, our blood oxygen. So it'll be very nice to see what this actually brings when Apple announces it in less than two weeks now. We are also going to get AirPods 4. Now, this is basically just bringing down some of those pro-level features down the pipeline to everyone else. So one big thing we're seeing from the leaks and rumors are that they possibly may have ear tips, and they're, of course, going to come with USB-C and maybe even a speaker to help you find them, just like the AirPod Pro second generation have. And there may even be new AirPod Maxes coming at this event, as it's been a very long time since Apple has upgraded the AirPod Maxes, although all it seems that Apple would do is keep the exact same design, internals, and everything, and just change it over to a USB-C port, which as an AirPod Max user, I think that is a very bad decision, and I think they should ultimately just decide to upgrade it entirely, as that would just make more people inclined to upgrade if they already have them, or just even make them more enticing, as it wouldn't be lacking behind my AirPod Pros that I use all the time. So when I switch from my AirPod Pro second generation to my first generation AirPods, I have to say, hey, SIRI, I just can't use the SIRI trigger and automatic replying and all these other features that I've just grown to love with my AirPod Pros that I honestly find myself using them more than I use my AirPod Maxes because of that. Now, let me know what you guys are most excited for with a comment down below because this is definitely going to be a very interesting event from Apple as this is the first time we're really going to get products that are designed to take advantage of this Apple intelligence that is coming out later this year. So make sure you're subscribed for my full hands-on after the event because you definitely don't want to miss it. But I want you to remember that today's a good day to make a great day and I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.